beautiful turquoise water, soft pristine sand, and tall palm trees for some shade. These are the things we're looking for in a good beach, right? Hi guys, Vanessa here and welcome to Passport Pages. And in today's video, I'm taking you with me all over the Caribbean to find that perfect stretch of sand. And the great thing is, this video is for everyone, because whether you're visiting by cruise ship or staying at a traditional resort, all-inclusive, or Airbnb, we all want a good beach on our vacation. So keep watching as I help you fulfill your tropical fantasies by finding the best beaches in the Caribbean. Let's kick things off with the beautiful Seven Mile Beach on Grand Cayman. And as its name suggests, there is plenty of space to spread out here, although it is closer to six miles long, but still a very nice sized beach. But the main thing that you'll immediately notice is how pretty the water is, just the perfect shade of turquoise and very clear as well, surrounded by incredibly white sand, almost too bright, and it's very soft for lounging. But my favorite thing of all is how swimmable the beaches, one of the most swimmable in the Caribbean, which is one of the main reasons it makes my list. That's harder to find than you'd think, so if you like swimming in the ocean on vacation as I do, I prefer the ocean to pools, then this is the perfect beach for you. Now, not surprisingly, because it's such a great beach, it does draw many visitors, especially cruisers, as this is a popular port for ships. So my advice is to head to the northern part of the beach to escape the crowds, and you'll have plenty of palm trees to have a quiet and shaded rest, and just listen to the gentle waves brushing the shore. So nice. This whole stretch of beach, of course, has some of the best hotels and resorts on the Cayman Islands, and you can even rent beach chairs from some of the bigger properties and then spend the evening at one of the nearby restaurants. So a great beach to spend the day, even if you're just visiting for a handful of hours. This is also a great beach for divers and some of the sites can be accessed right from shore, which is super convenient. So overall, it's an incredibly beautiful beach with a lot of options to make a wonderful day of it. And I recommend that everyone check it out because you won't be disappointed. Now let's head to Antigua and Half Moon Bay, which is a very underrated spot. And most people don't realize that Antigua is actually one of the best islands in the entire Caribbean, maybe the best, for beaches, with 360 stretches of beach. So the fact that Half Moon Bay is the best with all that competition says a lot but it's just an incredibly beautiful bay located at the southeastern end of the island, surrounded by lush greenery. So not only do you have nice surroundings, but it also provides plenty of shade. And because the waters here are protected by a reef, the snorkeling is great, so bring your gear. And there's even a nice beach shack that serves drinks and snacks so you can make a day of it. The only downside is the surf can whip up on windy days, which they have more often than not, so just be prepared for a bit of wind. You might have some things blow away. But other than that, it's a pretty perfect beach and a must visit in Antigua. Now to a beach I've talked about many times on my channel, Bavaro Beach in Punta Cana, which is of course the resort hotspot of the Dominican Republic. And I love this beach for so many reasons, from its soft white sand to its many palm trees and clear aqua blue water. But maybe best of all is how long it is, 48 kilometers, which is why there are so many resort options on this beach. And because it's so long, this is my pick for the best walk walking beach in the Caribbean. You can just walk and walk and you won't even notice because the silky softness of the sand perfectly cushions your feet. This is also a very active beach, just tons to do from the usual swimming to sunbathing to snorkeling, kayaking, parasailing, and even catamaran cruises. You see it all here as most resort guests really try to take advantage of all this beautiful beach has to offer. 
Bavaro also has some of the best golf courses in the entire Caribbean. And I've never mentioned it before, but I recommend checking out Scape Park, which I recently discovered, and they offer zipline tours and dune buggy rentals and a beautiful lagoon Hoyo Azul there as well. So if you like more activity with your beach experience, walking, water sports, and tour options, this is my beach pick for the more active traveler. You'll always have plenty to keep you busy. Now let's head over to Jamaica and the lovely Negril Beach, which is also known as Seven Mile Beach. Yes, like the one in the Cayman Islands, so we'll just refer to it as Negril Beach. And it's truly one of the best, stretching from Bloody Bay in the north all the way to the Negril Cliffs in the south, which offer amazing views. But all along the way, you'll find clear blue water and beautiful white sand and coconut palm trees. And the locals really use these coconut palms to their advantage, because you'll find both resort and standalone restaurants tucked around the trees along the beach so you can refuel throughout your day in the sun. This beach is also great for swimming and snorkeling, and Negril unfortunately tends to get overshadowed by the more resort-heavy areas of Montego Bay and Ocho Rios, but it's actually a lovely place to explore after your beach day. They have beautiful gardens filled with wildlife and exotic birds, and even local healing mineral springs, so the spa treatments in the area are wonderful as well. But my personal favorite thing of all is their sunsets. Absolutely spectacular, so don't rush off just because the sun is setting, because you'll be missing out on something really special. Now to the absolutely beautiful Grand Dance Beach in Grenada, which is only three kilometers long, but just an idyllic beach surrounded by coconut, almond, and sea grape trees with very soft white sand, and the colors of the water vary with different shades of aqua, turquoise, and then more of a deeper shade of blue as well, just gorgeous. The sea is usually very calm, so great for swimming as well as finding things in the shallows like tiny fish, crabs, and even sea stars. And if you're in the mood for more activity, there are several equipment rental options within a small area, renting kayaks and catamarans by the hour. I also highly recommend Grand Ant's Craft and Spice Market, which sits about halfway along the stretch of beach. They have some really great local crafts and souvenirs to commemorate your visit. There are a couple of negatives to mention that don't have anything necessarily to do with the actual beach, but something you should know anyway. It is a popular cruise ship stop, and because of that, you'll see vendors strolling along the beach. They are pretty polite, not pushy like many of the others you'll find elsewhere, but again, just something for you to be aware of. But other than that, it's a wonderful beach. It's especially pretty and definitely a must visit in the Caribbean. Now to a more well-known beach that definitely lives up to the hype, Crane Beach in Barbados, which was named after cargo ships which unloaded their wares here, which then had to be lifted by a crane, hence the name. But the overall look of this beach is incredibly unique, made of the palest pink coral sand and surrounded by steep cliffs. It's just incredibly beautiful and dramatic. The easiest way to access the beach is by the steep public stairs that go all the way down to the sand, or if you have mobility issues, there's a glass elevator at the Crane Resort, which gets you down there as well. Now, the most important thing to know about this beach is that it's got some pretty powerful waves. But interestingly, most resort guests and cruisers find this to be a big advantage as the powerful surf makes for really good body surfing and boogie boarding, and you'll see a lot of guests spending the day doing both. Unfortunately, the surf does not make for good swimming, and I'd caution you guys against doing so, and they have lifeguards on duty that usually do the same. But if you're looking for an incredibly beautiful beach to spend some time, it's the most Instagram-worthy choice on my list. It makes for the prettiest pictures and one you should definitely check out. And now to my personal favorite, Eagle Beach in Aruba. It's always named as one of the best beaches in the world, and having been there, I completely agree. 
the perfect sand and clear blue water are worth a visit alone. Most other places other than the Maldives pale in comparison, and it's my pick for the most relaxing beach, with thatched umbrellas sprinkled everywhere, and you can even see turtles nesting along the beach in season. Now, I want to make a clear distinction between Eagle Beach and the other main beach in Aruba, Palm Beach, because I've been to both, and trust me, they're very different. Palm Beach is where most of the resorts are, there's much more to do, but the beach isn't nearly as pristine and definitely not nearly as relaxing since this is where most visitors and cruisers spend their time, so a very different vibe overall. The only somewhat disturbing thing to your rest on Eagle Beach might be some passing jet skis. Jet skiing is big here, so I suggest the southern end of the beach, which is even more peaceful. But don't skip out on the northern end either, which has their famous trees, sitting against perfect blue water and pristine sand, making for some beautiful pictures. So I highly recommend visiting this beach. It's one of those places that should be on everyone's Caribbean bucket list, in my opinion, and no one ever regrets a visit here. It's the best. Now to a big reason why the Turks and Caicos Islands are such a popular Caribbean destination, and that's gorgeous Grace Bay, which just like Eagle Beach, almost seems too beautiful to be true, with the softest sand and brightest blue water you've ever seen surrounded by coral reef. It stretches for eight kilometers, and it's a great beach for exploring, especially if you go out to that reef, which is filled with tropical fish, stingrays, sea turtles, and even wild dolphins that love to swim along the coast, so you'll definitely catch a glimpse of them. And on a side note, if you enjoy that type of thing, I really recommend Princess Alexandra Marine Park, which is a great location for exploring below the water. This stretch of beach, of course, has a wide variety of wonderful resorts, from family-friendly to luxury. They do tend to be on the pricey side, but worth the money as they're some of the best resorts anywhere. So a bit of everything here at this beach. It's incredibly beautiful, has a lot to do, especially for marine life and exploration, and some of the best resort options anywhere right on the beach, making it one of the best in the Caribbean. So there you have the best and most beautiful beaches in the Caribbean. Please let me know which of these are your favorites and which ones you love in addition to my list. I know there are many more to choose from. If you have any reviews and recommendations you'd like to see in the future, please let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, be sure to check my community posts as I will be making some big channel announcements soon. This is Vanessa for Passport Pages. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all very soon. Bye, guys.